you have ongoing high B12 levels on a blood test and trying to figure out why your B12 is high, maybe you're asking the question, is my high B12 from food? My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to look at that question specifically, what is the likelihood of food impacting your high B12 levels? How much is it contributing? What sort of things would you have to be eating for this to be a factor? So if you like this kind of information on health, nutrition, digestion, hormones, things in this general category that help you gain a deeper understanding of what's going on internally with your body, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as a treatment for any health condition or as a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical professional. It should be used as an educational guide to deeper your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's check out this question on the impact of food on your high B12 level. All right, so we're going to look at this question around your food contributing to high B12. So many people ask this question if their high B12 could be coming from certain foods, eating specific type of diet. I want to look at this from a practical standpoint and, and couple that with some of the research and see how likely it would be for something like this to occur. So first of all, the RDA or recommended daily allowance for B12 is around 2.4 micrograms per day. So yes, this is a very small amount and it's just the minimum amount of B12 you need not to become deficient or have some long-term health issue. And of course, some people may need slightly more, some people may need slightly less, depending on genetics and different things like that. But it gives us a rough idea of how much B12 somebody needs. And this is around the same amount that we're basically losing every day through, through our urine, through our stool. So that just means anything above that, say two to four micrograms could be you know stored in the tissues. And your body does store some B12 in muscles, it stores it in, B in the liver and other tissues throughout the body. So once you get above a certain threshold in terms of intake through food or whatever, that's when you're going to see it start showing up in the blood as higher amounts. So let's say you're using about three to five micrograms a day and you're losing about three to five micrograms a day. So that takes us up to about maybe six to 10 micrograms total that you need to intake in your food in order to just maintain your levels. So what possible diet could account for such a high level in your blood going be up beyond what the normal reference range shows. First, we need to account for the B12 absorption and the B12 binding capacity. So to find out this information, I looked up some research articles on this topic, and you can find a link to that in the description. But basically, the amount of B12 that is absorbed increases with the B12 intake. But there's a limit to this. The percentage absorbed decreases with the amount that you're actually intaking. So one study looking at this found that with one microgram dosing, 50% percent is absorbed and 20% at 5 micrograms and 5% at up to 25 micrograms. Now keep in mind a typical dose for B12 is somewhere around 1,000 to 5,000 micrograms. So anything above 25, you know, you're really getting diminishing returns of absorption of that. This is looking at through the digestive tract directly, sublingual dosing may be different. When it comes to things like injections, excess B12 circulating in the blood that goes beyond what the binding capacity is, the trans cabal and binding capacity, then that will simply be treated in the body. So if you get a thousand microgram shot, you may retain, you know, 50% of that, which is much higher than if you took it through your digestive tract or even sublingually. And that seems to be some of the problem with people that have high B12 levels is they could just have, you know, a higher binding capacity. And that's part of what I talk about in my book, Don't Be Deficient. So back to our story about the impact of your food intake on high B12 levels. So it is possible to radio label B12 and see how much is actually being absorbed from certain certain foods. Studies looking at this, uh, which you can find in the description, found that subjects consuming around 100 grams of lamb absorbed about 65 micrograms of B12 from that. Those consuming 200 grams of chicken absorbed about 55 micrograms, and there was much less for fish and eggs. So 100 grams is about 3.5 ounces, which is an average serving size. So if you eat two portions of chicken per day, or the equivalent in beef or lamb, and you do this every single day for months on end, and you have higher end absorption and higher higher binding capacity or you know good or normal binding capacity, it is very possible to end up with a high B12 level in your blood. However, this would not be the typical scenario. Most people 
don't eat this much animal protein. Some do, some probably even eat more than this, but you can't take any days off. So you have to just keep going, going, going. And who knows, maybe you'd have to do it for six months. The point is it's possible to exceed your daily needs and excretion of B12 from eating a high, highly concentrated animal protein diet. So it's very possible. Looking at it from this angle, it seems more possible than I originally thought. But I think for the average person, food is not contributing to your high B12 levels. Put another way, it's contributing, but it's not the causative factor. And that's the whole thing with looking at high B12 levels. It's not a problem in and of itself, but it's what it's pointing to. So if you do have high B12 levels, trying to figure out why, it may be related to your food intake. It may not be. It really depends on the overall context, how much animal protein you're eating, etc. So what do you think? Do you think your food intake of B12 is contributing to your high B12 levels? Let me know. Drop it in the comment section. If you do have questions about anything in this topic, also drop that in the comment section. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you next time.